Today I'm breaking down my latest photo composite. It was our kids heading off on their first day of school. It was made start to finish all in the iPad Pro with a little app called Affinity Photo. If you're new here, my name's Andrew Goodman and I do creative work on the iPad Pro. And for the past six months, I've been running this YouTube channel focusing mainly on Affinity Photo, an app I think is absolutely fantastic, game changing actually, when it comes to photo compositing and photo editing. This time last year, I wanted to do something a bit different, a bit creative with our first day of school photo. Here in Northern Ireland, the first day of school is a big event. You march your kid out to the front door, you take their photo in front of the door and you whisk them off to school. And let me know, is that the same where you come from in your country? Is that just Northern Ireland thing? Is that just a British thing where we march our kids out and, and take the photo in front of the front door? If it is or if it's not, let me know in the comments below where you're from and do you do that? I, I would love to read those comments and reply to them and just find out, is that just a thing we do or is that a worldwide thing? Anyway, getting back to the photo, this is the photo I took last year. It was me and my wife waving our kids off on their first day of school. We were a bit excited. That wasn't actually the case. I'm quite sad when my kids go back to school, but I'm weird like that. We were looking as if we were over the moon. Hopefully the days of homeschooling was behind us with two years of homeschooling and in school and homeschooling, probably similar of what your country went through with the whole COVID pandemic. And thankfully that was the case that we were waving our kids off and homeschooling was a distant memory. And and if you're still doing homeschooling, I salute you. You're absolutely amazing. So we were very happy to see our kids, or we wanted to look as if we were very happy to see our kids going off to school. And this was made up of a few photos, and that was brilliant fun. This year, I completely forgot about that photo until the week of school, and I thought... Last year, we did a quite a quirky, quite a creative first day of school photo. Can we do the same this year? And I thought, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's go for it. So a few weeks ago, our kids started school on the Tuesday and it was actually the Friday where I set up a bit of a backdrop, took a few photos and I had an idea of what to do. I wanted a DeLorean. If you're a fan of the channel, you know my favourite film is Back to the Future. But it's quite appropriate this year because I wanted to send our kids off in the DeLorean because this is the first, the first first day of school in two years where it kind of felt like here in Northern Ireland anyway, things were getting back to normal. COVID restrictions were all gone. There was no more face masks. The kids were allowed to go to assemblies. It was back to normal. It was the first normal first day of school since 2019. So it was kind of going back to the future. At least that was in my head. That's the kind of idea I was going for. Myself and my wife wasn't in at this time. I've got my eldest son driving and the younger two kids at the back wanting to look as if they were doing something. And this is the photo I came up with. And it was a lot, a lot of fun. So I'm just going to break this process or at least my thought process down step by step. This isn't a normal video for me. Normally I do tutorials in a Finley photo. If you like this kind of video, please say so in the comments below if you'd like to see more of videos like this from me and uh, I'll maybe make them in the future. The first thing about a photo like this, you need an idea. You need an idea. I've explained briefly what the idea was of going back to school in the DeLorean and I wanted something a wee bit fun and I think this photo achieved it, especially with my son driving with the sunglasses looking a bit Marty McFly-esque and the two kids in the back looking as if they're nearly struggling to hang on to this, this flag, this first day of school flag. So in my living room, it's not a photography studio, I set up one light a bit of a white backdrop and I just took a few photos and it didn't take too long, maybe 10, 15 minutes to get the three kids and a few shots. When you're working with kids, time is off the essence. You don't want to keep them waiting too long. So a few quick snaps and I got, I reviewed the photos and I got the photos I wanted. So after the photos were taken, had my dinner, put the kids to bed, all that fun stuff. It was about 9 p.m. before I got back downstairs into my living room and I picked up the iPad Pro just to do maybe two hours of work to maybe 11 p.m. or so the plan was. I worked until 3 a.m. in the morning. 3 a.m. in the morning. Hadn't been up to 3 a.m. in ages. But there was something about the iPad Pro when you start working, or at least for me, I was in my living room. I was comfortable. I just started working and I just kept going. I thought, I'll do this wee bit and another wee bit and another wee bit. And before I knew it, I thought, you know what? Keep going until I finish it. And that's one of the nice things, the iPad Pro or any iPad for that fact. You can go anywhere and just start working. In my living room, I sat down. It was comfortable. It was nice. My wife was there too. She was watching Netflix or something like that. But if I was up working here, and this is my home office behind me here, if I'm working here alone at night to 3 a.m. in the morning, it's not much fun. It feels a wee bit rigid. The great thing about the iPad Pro is you can work anywhere. And that's part of the reason I kept going and going and going. So I had my photographs. I cut them out, found a photo of the DeLorean, found all our elements and started putting it together 
piece by piece. So I'm just going to break this down layer by layer of how I made this photo composite. First image is the background image. I got this image from unsplash.com and I wanted something that looked a bit in the countryside, but this here shade isn't a normal or kind of is it a bus shelter, some kind of bus shelter, some kind of shade. That's not something you'd normally get in Northern Ireland at all. It doesn't look, it doesn't look very Northern Irish at all. If you're driving down our roads, you won't see that. So I quickly got rid of that and then add in some greenery because here in Northern Ireland, it's very green. And I just wanted to emphasize that a bit more by adding some green and trees into it. Again, this photo was from unsplash.com. I then found an image on the internet of a DeLorean, a side on view of the DeLorean. I cut around it and added that in. At this stage, I also made the tires look as if they were spinning around because this was a static photo. So just the cell effect of the car in motion, I made the tires look as if they're spinning around. There's no shadow. So I simply added a bit of a shadow, cut my son out, Add at him, look as if he was driving. And then add in my younger two kids, rotated them slightly so it looked as if they were hanging on for their lives nearly. And that is not actually a rope of a flag. That is actually my MacBook lead. It's my MacBook lead just tied up on the backdrop of the of the stand and it, it worked well and no one would know any difference. Simply then add it in a white flag, use the same graphic as last year, only 2022 instead of 2021. Add it in a school sign with an arrow pointing towards school. So the fear knew which way school was, again, just to help sell the effect and add a wee bit of quirkiness and maybe a wee bit of humor to the photo. Obviously in Back to the Future, when you hit 88 miles per hour, Flames come out at the back of the tires and it goes into the future or the past, depending where you want to go. So I wanted to add that effect too. Again, just for fun and visually, I hoped it would look quite nice. So if you look closely, I added in this fire trail. I added some motion blur onto the fire trail just so it wasn't pin sharp. Again, just to help sell the effect. And another thing that helps to sell this effect is the small details. You nearly don't realize it, but they're there when you're looking at the photo. When there's fire, obviously that's a light source. So a bit of that fire or the light of the fire had to reflect off the DeLorean. If you look, there's a bit, a slight bit of an outline of this light on the, the back of the car. I then highlighted this even more with more color. And then finally, I put a bit of a lens flare in there because you, you have to have a bit of a lens flare. And that again, all these wee things really help sell that effect of fire, of reflecting off the car, of going fast. And there's a wee bit of motion blur added. At this stage, I'm pretty happy with the photo, but there's still something missing. Or there's something not right. And I started experimenting with a few things and the background I decided to put motion blur onto it. So I added motion blur on every single layer of the background and that really helped sell the effect. It looks as if the car's going fast. They're in a bit of a rush to get to school. The focus is on the car. The focus is on my kids and the background. You know what it's there but it's blurred out a wee bit because of the motion blur speed and it really helps to sell this effect too. Then just to bring it all together, add a bit of a sunbeam, bit of a light source coming from the sun to shine on the car, on the picture. Did a final color grade, not an affinity photo. I brought that into another app called Darkroom, which I absolutely love and hopefully soon-ish, I'll do a review on Darkroom and what I think about it and why I use it and why I use that over Lightroom. So stay, stay tuned for that if that interests you. I'm really happy with it and it didn't take long. I had the idea and I just went for it. It was a late night, all, albeit, but when you're in the zone, when you're in the creative mode, you just keep going, going, going sometimes, or at least I do. And it was a lot of fun. I posted it on social media, sent it around a few of my friends. It got a bit of a laugh, a bit of a smile and a different photo from standing in front of a door. Nothing wrong with standing in front of a door as a first day of school photo, but it's nice to do a project like this and you always learn something. And I had a lot of fun, a bit tired the next morning, but it was well well worth it. Now that was a very quick rundown of layer by layer or more or less layer by layer of how I made this photo. Quite recently I've been getting quite a few comments asking me, Andrew, is there a course coming or could you make a course? Could you go a bit more in depth with some of your affinity photos? And I know that's not for everyone. Some people are just picking up affinity photo. Some people are wanting more. This here composite took a long, long time. And if it was to make this all on my YouTube channel, it would be many, many, many hours, probably many videos covering different things. And I think people might get a bit bored of it. But if you would like me to make a course on this subject, this photo or something similar, please let me know in the comments below. I do read and reply to every one of them. And I just want to give you a feeling, is that something you would like for me to go a really in-depth course on a photo composite, something like this, how I made it step by step. It'd be quite a long course. I think it'd be good fun. I've no time 
time frame for it if I do decide to make it. I've got a family. I've got a full time job. I love this YouTube channel. I love teaching people. I love helping people. But it does take time and a course would probably take some time to make. But let me know in the comments. Just give me a general feeling. I'm not saying I'm going to do it, but it, I think it might be something I would like to consider to do something that would really go in depth. It won't cost the earth like, don't worry about that. But please let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd like me to consider. If it's not, that's great. If it is, that's also great. Regardless, I'm not going anywhere. This channel's not going anywhere. I'm still going to be creating affinity photo tutorials for free. And down the line, I hope to maybe explore other apps, other creative apps that you can use on the iPad. And let me know in the comments below, did you enjoy this video? Did you learn something? Is this kind of something you'd like to see more regularly? Or should I just stick to the, just stick to the tutorials, Andrew, and learning stuff? Hopefully you learned something for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed watching my process. And I would love it if you give this video a like. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. There's going to be lots more videos coming out. I read and reply to every comment, so I look forward to reading them in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.